Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Medieval 2 Total War The English Campaign Well Orders. You know last time we left off uh, a little bit of uh, change of plans with this campaign and it was more interactive people have got control of family members now and uh, yeah I was supposed to update this tomorrow but I, I'm so excited I cannot wait so I'm updating it today and only one person hasn't put a request through so uh, we're good to go anyway so quite a few things to do in these few parts and it's also gonna be a little bit of a change of how I uh, do the videos as well normally I do a 10 minute video hello and welcome and then at the end of the 10 minutes goodbye and come back in the next part none of that now I'm just gonna play for as long as it takes and just split the videos up afterwards so it'll be maybe rather than being four separate or three separate 10 minute snippets it's going to be one long 40 minute snippet just chopped down in uh, appropriate places because it'll make it easier for me to play out the parts because uh, there's quite a few things to do as requested by other people so we'll start off by uh, looking at the family members and what they requested for these few parts Mr. Eilf the Honest, well, 42, his, uh, I've put all the tax rates down as well. I had the tax rates on, like, very high, um, so they had yellow faces, but I've taken all the tax rates down, so everybody has got a green face. And then I will be undertaking a tax audit in the next forum post, and it is up to the family members whether or not they want to put the tax rates up at the cost of uh, making their settlements a little bit unhappy with them, or whether they want to keep it green. So Elfgar, put your tax rate down to high, population is there, 120% public order, upgrading, and you wanted to get rid of the rebel army. Um, we put it to the vote, the rebel army is in your lands, causing devastation. Uh, Paul of York wanted to use the rebel army to train his assassins, however everybody else, including yourself, has requested to get rid of these uh, rebels, and therefore that is what we will do. The way we're going to do it is... Uh, Hubert Davis is going to recruit a small force of army probably far too strong <laughs> given the situation but he's going to recruit a small force of army he's going to lead it personally as per his request and he is going to crush the rebel army and then send the remainder of the troops north for Eilfgar to command to get rid of Captain Kyle. That is how we are going to deal with the rebels in the English lands. People have seen enough of them and they are going to bite the dust. So that's that. So that's the family members all in England catered for. Uh, Paul also said he was going to recruit uh, some assassins which we will do in the next couple of turns. We have two assassins already going south um, they are going to be the two assassins that wreak havoc in Spanish lands and we will have another couple of assassins to wreak havoc in the Milanese lands as well because we are going to send an army down there which I will go into in a little bit. So, as we move further down the map we have London again. I've put the tax rate down from high down to normal. Uh, if you want uh, Simon Maitland to put the tax rate up and increase the production for this kingdom or keep it the same to keep your people happy again the choice is yours um, and you're currently obviously building the merchants quarters so the building work is already underway but uh, there's another family member in here Josias of Dratwich who My wants leash. to uh, move to his own settlement he wants to move to Ron so he's also going to uh, step foot on the boat with the rest of the army that was going down to Ralph Watkins Tomorrow's journey he has requested that he be given some extra garrison there, which we will take from Angers because they're not recruiting anything at the moment. So he wanted a couple of yeoman archers and a horse to just slightly strengthen the garrison of Rons. Because they are on the border with Spain and if Spain should come north and attack he will be feeling a bit undermanned. And I also request said that I would tra recruit or construct Ballista Towers and a City Watch to strengthen the defences there. And once again I've taken the tax rate down to low. You could have it normal but the choice is yours. And that's how we're going to deal with that situation. So that's that. A, who else is there? To, oh, Nicholas Horson's under siege by Dijon which is probably going to 
be the focus of the next turn. Uh, I myself, King Ambrose, will try my best to get there to assist, but I don't think I'm going to make it in time. I think they're going to attack the next turn. And the final piece of the puzzle, Marseille is being besieged, or rather its port has been blockaded by the Milanese troops. We cannot have this at all. So he wants to recruit some ships. I'll recruit three initially. And he wants to build his cathedral and his market, which is next in line. And he... Oh, tax rate down as well there. Initially. And then he is going to wait. Michelle is going to wait patiently for the army to be uh, recruited for him. It's going to come from Bern and Metz. It's going to come down. And then he is going to lead the attack on Marseille in Italy. So that is <clears throat> what we have in plan for the future for the family members as per their requests. You know it's eight different people, it's eight different mindsets, eight different things that they want to do and so far I've not really had to decline anybody at the moment. I've uh, pretty much been quite a good king and uh, allowed them to have their requests apart from the people that we were wanting to go south and attack the Spanish. I did say that already uh, Ralph Watkins yes, noble, was given that honour and therefore can't do that. So, <coughs> onwards and upwards. As the Melanese do actually attack Nicholas Horston, this is going to be a pivotal, pivotal point in the campaign. The Melanese struck the first blow. Total disgrace, really. I shall lead our forces into battle, my lord. Oh dear. Simon Maitland, yes that was it. Uh, Simon Maitland uh, was going to come and take over from the King's army, from my army, as I go back to London. He's going to fortify himself on the borders of the Holy Romans. Again, we'll, uh, we'll get to that when we come to it. Right now we have bigger fish to fry, namely Milanese. Okay, uh, I wasn't given any specific battle deployment strategies from Nicholas Horston. He was just hoping that recruit, uh, recruit, recruitments, reinforcements would be able to help him, but, uh, well... In war, there's nothing so becomes a man as bravery before your enemies. A man can be afraid and still be brave, and any man who faces battle without concern is a moonstruck fool. To be brave is to go forward anyway, no matter how afeared. That is why I go forward, in the company of so many other brave men. Our Milanese foes are reputed to be good with figures and accounts. This will help them when they count their dead. Too right! There's... Remember that we cannot let one of those bastards in. Not a one! Any foul attackers who enter must stay only to be meat for the carrion crows. I see the foe dare not fight us man to man, but must rely on a woman's stratagem of throwing things at us. <laughs> and remember, my enemies know that I am a brave man by repute, and I do not willingly keep company with poltroons. You are all picked brave men here, and the enemy know this. Your bravery already unmans them. Let's do the rest and finish them! If I was stood there right now, I would be feeling inspired to hack some Milanese arms off, I'm telling you. Nicholas Austin there giving his speech. Worthy of an award, I feel. Oh my god, they're so heavy in number. But, I mean, what do they have? What's this? They have onagers? God. I think they've only got like a tons of cross Genoese crossbow militia. That's the main force makeup. They've just got tons of bloody crossbow militia, which I feel we could really, uh, you know, do well against. Uh, I'm probably going to temporarily pause it whilst I do my uh, deployment. Stand by, I will be back. Hello everybody, welcome back. I've done my deployment. It's my usual strategy here. I have my archers on the walls, naturally. Um, 
I have my horses just off centre here, just in case we need to rush out for anything, like if the, you know, their militia artillery comes too close. And then we have all our men, foot soldiers, surrounding the gate. I mean, they may come through the walls as well, but we will redeploy if necessary. I'm hoping to get them crushed into the gate as per usual. Because they've got weakened infantry, they've got weakened crossbow militia, I'm hoping that they will rout very quickly as well. Um, my horse, uh, I'm just re thinking maybe I should put my horses next to the side gates should we need to flank the enemy as they're crushing through. Um, but there seems to be a hell of a lot. They've also got horses as well, so I might just forego that for the time being. If the situation changes during the battle, I will uh, react accordingly. <sighs> I've never been so nervous about a battle. I have somebody's life in my hands really now. It's uh, quite strange. <laughs> 